My wife isn't home yet, so that means I can do whatever I want. Let's set the house on fire. Today we're going to take a look at one of the more underappreciated woodworking tools that most people have at their disposal, but isn't in the workshop. It's in the kitchen. Man, I need to oil that door. In case you're wondering why anyone would want to put wood in their oven, there are several reasons. When lumber is first cut out of the log, it's going to be far too wet to use in any kind of indoor projects. As the wood dries out, it's going to cup, warp, shrink, crack, twist, any other number of defects. Uh, the second reason is that if wood has insects in it, they're going to make it inside your house if you don't cook the wood before you start your project. So this, this one had some ant damage in this ash tree. Uh, we have some bamboo here, which uh, bamboo gets eaten by powder post beetles. And here we have some ambrosia maple, and you can see here that the ambrosia maple is caused by a beetle. And uh, there's the exit point at the end of those two pieces of figure. So when you bake the wood, not only do you dry it out and stabilize it, here's a good example of the stable piece of beech that was baked in the oven two weeks ago, still almost perfectly flat. Uh, you also kill any kind of insects that may be in there before they come into your house. Now what we're going for today is not just going to be kiln dried wood, we're going to thermally modify the wood or bake it until the actual cellular structure of the wood changes. The advantages of doing this are that thermally modified wood first of all will become a little bit darker so uh, maybe this piece of beech would end up looking like that piece of maple there. That's a nice, uh, nice aesthetic benefit. Also when you, when you bake the wood to those temperatures uh, this, the, um, the fibers shrink down and the wood becomes more dense, so that makes it more water resistant. Additionally, any sugar and starch that's inside the wood that uh, is exactly what the, the bugs and the insects go in there for is no longer going to be present. So by thermally modifying wood, you make an insect resistant, water resistant, rot resistant board. Well, which is considerably better than pressure treated wood, which is just regular wood that has some chemicals put in it. You can make thermally modified boards in your oven that uh, will outlast pressure treated wood when left outside. My oven gives me approximately 23 inches of width without touching the sides and maybe 17 inches of depth, which is uh, probably suitable for most of the smaller projects that I build. Now, something to keep in mind before we do this, obviously safety is a consideration. Uh, the the uh, heating elements at the bottom and the top get hot. Top one only if you turn on the broiler. I'm just using the bottom one. Uh, I'm also going to place the wood on an aluminum pan because the aluminum pan will absorb and distribute a lot of the heat and acts as somewhat of a heat shield to prevent the wood from actually bursting into flames too early. These are the samples we're going to use for this test, ranging from ash to zebra wood and including ash, beech, cedar, cherry, soft maple, rock maple, pine, poplar, purple heart, red oak, walnut, and zebra wood. Let's get started. Now I've already tried this a couple times previously uh, around the 175 temperature range so I think I'm going to just jump straight to 250. Let's see what this does. I tried to leave as much spacing as I could between the pieces, but uh, eventually one of them is going to catch fire and probably ignite the other ones as well. I suspect cedar, pine, or poplar are going to be early on in, in the species to ignite. It's been in there for over an hour at 250. That didn't do anything, so I took it up to 275 for 15 minutes, and that didn't do anything, so let's go to 300. In the meantime, I'm going to go try to find my tripod. Okay, that's been another hour at 325 degrees. Let's bump it up to 350. My understanding is that around 400 degrees is the point at which the wood is thermally modified, where the wood will actually start to darken all the way through. The shops that do this professionally and actually make thermally modified timber uh, will normally use a container that's void of oxygen and that way the wood can't actually combust. 
In this case, there's really no good way I can think of to seal the oven uh, for oxygen, so we'll just see the point at which the wood actually bursts into flames, and then any future heat treatments will have to be a little bit below that temperature. And it's been about another 15 minutes at 350 degrees. We are now going for 375. Now at 375, the wood is starting to smell a little less toasted and a little more burned. So I think something is going on in there. I think I'm starting to see a little bit of darkening in some of the wood. 375, 375 degrees. We are now going to 400 degrees. That's about 20, 20 minutes at 400 degrees and just to show you what's happening now there's a piece of pine next to its counterpart there. You can see it's definitely getting darker and there is some smoke coming off of some of those pieces. Alright, let's take it up to 425. All right, I've been going at uh, 425 degrees for approximately 15 minutes now, and in a remarkably annoying turn of events, my camera is overheating and running out of battery. My cell phone is running out of battery, and I have that uh, plugged in right now, but I don't want to sit here for the next however long it takes. So I got the battery from the, from the camera in the fridge right now cooling off, and I'm going to try to pop it in the charger. And I'm just going to cross my hope, uh, my fingers that the last six hours of waiting have not been in vain. Okay, it's now been over an hour at 425. Still nothing has caught on fire. And just to give you an idea where we're at, here's the uh, control piece of, whoa, pine next to the other piece of pine right there on the left. <laughs> Smoking. Going to 500. All right, that's some toasted wood there. I think we're going to call this experiment for the night because even though nothing is actually caught on fire. Oh, you know what? Opening the door may have let in just enough uh, enough oxygen. That piece of parrot cherry in the back is about to catch on fire. It's already burning from the bottom. So I'm going to take this stuff outside before I burn the house down, and uh, we'll wrap this up tomorrow. Oh man, that's smoky. Well, everything's had overnight to cool down, so let's go down the line and see how each piece of wood is affected by the heat. Starting with ash. I expected ash was going to hold up better than just about anything, but it actually had a little bit of shrinkage and cracking. Uh, it's got a, got a nice black color. It seems to be pretty uniform, and it still feels pretty solid. So I, I guess in that regard, it, it held up well, but uh, it did have quite a bit of shrinkage this way. 
And notice that the, the growth rings are running that way, so that's where you would expect the most, the most shrinkage to occur. The most affected out of the entire group was beech, which also kind of surprised me. The beech was the only one that actually uh, started to burn. It had, had white ash on the bottom. I thought that was uh, not ash the wood, but ashes, uh, embers. I thought that, uh, that this was cherry when it was in the back of the oven, but it turned out that that was the piece of beech. Cedar was another one of the surprises, a softer wood that held up okay when it came out of the oven. You can see it has some shrinkage in the middle, and again, the growth rings are running that way, so that's really where you would expect that to happen. Still feels solid, though, and I think that would be a, a, a usable piece of wood once flattened out. Cherry. Cherry took a little bit of a beating. I had some, some cracks uh, up on that end, and I think that was just because of, it was a, a slightly figured piece of cherry. It's turned almost completely black and shrunk quite a bit, a little bit of deforming, but it, uh, it feels pretty solid, but I guess it is, for the most part, a piece of charcoal at this point. The ambrosia maple held up okay, I guess. It had some, some uneven shrinking. Now, there was some, some uh, differences in the wood there because you have the side with the ambrosia, uh, I guess, character. That's, that's caused by a, a beetle. There's a fungus in there. And then the lighter wood that was the unaffected part out, uh, probably more the sapwood portion of the tree, and that's more into the heartwood. But uh, overall, it seems like it's okay. And the rock maple had more shrinkage than a lot of them. That was that shrunk about as much as the cherry, which was kind of interesting. So you see, this is quite a bit narrower narrower than the original piece, but it stayed pretty hard and it kept some of that nice. Um, Nice figure there, that quilting that was in the original. Actually really accentuated that on the on the sides. It's kind of cool, might do something with that. And here's another one of the big surprises. The pine was one of the least affected pieces out of the entire group. I thought that was gonna burn first. Uh, growth rings running in the other direction, which may have had something to do with it. But uh, either way, the, the pine just simply did not burn. And for another big surprise of the day, I thought this was kind of neat. Here we have a package of ebony veneer. How's that for a match? Put pine in the oven and you get ebony. Moving on to the poplar. The poplar, once again, that was one of the softer woods and I expected this was going to burn first and it, it didn't. The poplar held up okay, except for a little bit of shrinkage on that side. And uh, it, you can see it has, it has a little bit of a brown color, just like the pine, not so much a, a black color like some of the other ones. Purple Heart. This was an interesting one. It was, for the most part, unaffected. The Purple Heart held up very well, even in the higher heat, and it's, uh, it's nearly black. It's a little bit of a brownish color in there, but it's almost black. One thing I noticed with Purple Heart is after I took everything out of the oven, took it outside so it could uh, stop smoking, the Purple Heart was the hottest piece out of all of them, that maybe just because it's so dense. But I went down the line and touched each piece of wood. Some of them, like the pine were, and the cedar, were cool almost immediately, but the Purple Heart really retained that heat for quite a while and, and was actually probably several hundred degrees uh, to, to the touch, whereas the others were, were fine. Oak was another one that held up quite well and shrunk a bit that way, and I think that's just because of the direction the growth rings are running. So that's where you would expect it to shrink, um, but it's it's flat enough and feels solid, and I think that could be used for something. The walnut also held up pretty well. Growth rings running across the width there. A um, little bit of shrinkage, but for the most part, that's a solid piece of wood. And the zebra wood took a beating. I got some sapwood and some heartwood there. I would say the zebra wood did not really held up did not hold up very well at all. It's really just cracked and, and uh, split on that side. So I think this is, is uh, completely unusable. So now the next step is going to be to run each one of these through the bandsaw to, to split these in half and see what the inside looks like. Because really if we weren't doing this experiment to actually burn the wood, uh, the idea would be to toast it to give it a darker color and more resistance to, to water and to, to dry up the sugar and starches that are in there that the, that the insects like to eat. 
So let's take a look at the inside of these and see if any of them actually got that nice toasted effect before they went completely burned. There we have the inside of each block of wood. And you can see that each one has, uh, for the most part, a brown center and is blacker towards the end grain, which kind of makes sense. Now, all of these were considerably softer when I pushed them through the bandsaw. It cut like nothing, with the exception of the oak, which was still reasonably hard, and the purple heart, which still felt like cutting purple heart. So purple heart appears to be the most fire resistant wood or heat resistant wood out of all of these. And it also is the one that retains the most heat out of all of these. Most of these pieces are unusable, but what we were looking for, uh, I mean the whole point of doing this is not just to burn wood, although that was the fun part. Uh, we wanted to see what, uh, what we could do with, um, with modifying the wood, thermally modifying the wood, heat treating it or toasting it so we get that toasted color. And I think that's really what we're looking for, kind of, kind of right there. The cedar actually stayed the lightest on the inside. Um, some of these still look pretty good. So there's, there's some nice color on the oak and on the pine. So I think this calls for, for another experiment. We've got all these other blocks here. I may as well use them. So let's pop those back in the oven, and we'll see the outcome in another video.